Hello everyone, this is Daniel with Indie Game Cove. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a photo album in Construct 2. This is the finished product I have on screen now. Um, as it stands, we have two albums. One is a family album, and the second is a friends album. And you can then cycle through the various pictures uh, within each of those albums. Alright, so let's go ahead and open up Construct 2 and get building. So I'm going to begin by opening up a new empty project. And I'm going to go into my Layers tab and go ahead and click on Layer 0. And I'm going to change the background color to a nice gray color. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click anywhere in my screen and just go ahead and add a sprite. Now this sprite will act as a container for all of our different photos. So I already have downloaded a couple of uh, sample photos from the internet. So I'll start with loading all of those up. Just go ahead and add about four frames and then add in the photos that you like. Once you've added your photos, you're going to want to resize them. You can resize them by using the uh, resize tool. And um, so for a uh, landscapes-oriented picture, then you're going to want about uh, 500 width by 400 height, and then apply it to the whole animation. And if you have any uh, portrait-style pictures, then you can go in and change those individually. Once you've done that, go ahead and click on your animation, and we're going to rename it to Family. And then we're going to change the speed to zero. All right, and go ahead and set that up on your page. Now we're going to create a couple of arrows. We're going to call this one Right Arrow. And I'm just going to create it with the tools that we have here. But if you're creating this for your project, you'll probably want to use a program like Inkscape or simply uh, purchase your own. Um, after you've made your arrow, go ahead and make sure that the collision box is as you want it to be. And then we're going to go ahead and clone the object. Make sure to clone it rather than copying it. And then we're going to rename our clone left arrow. We're going to go ahead and flip our arrow and then select both of them and go ahead and resize them. Alright, once you've resized them, just go ahead and get them where you want to on the page. Then we're going to go ahead and add a mouse, um, a mouse input. And now we get into our event sheet. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add two global variables. The first global variable we're going to name active frame. And this will correspond to the frame that our animation is on. And then our second variable will be um, frame count. And this will count how many, this will represent how many um, frames are in the animation in total. All right, so now we're going to create an on start event. On the start of our layout, we want the system to set the frame count to our sprite 
animation frame frame count and we're using a method in order to do that to add a method you simply um, type in the name of the object add a period and then simply select the method that you want so in this case we want animation frame count hit done and so on the start of our layout the um, the system is going to take a look at our sprite and say how many frames are in the currently active animation and now we're going to go ahead and add another event we're going to add a mouse click event on object clicked and select our right arrow and what we want to do is when we click this right arrow we want the animation to change from the current frame and just add one to the frame so we're going to say set frame to active frame and we're going to add one have the system add one to the active frame now it's important to put the addition above the uh, setting frame action um, because if you do it in the opposite order it won't work right so then we're just going to copy and paste this entire event to duplicate it and now we're going to adjust this so instead of using the right arrow we're going to select the left arrow and instead of adding one to the active frame we're subtracting one from the we're going to subtract one from the active frame and by doing that it will uh, it will go ahead and change frames um, in the opposite direction so as we're adding um, to our active frame it's going to go progressing to the right in our animation and then um, by clicking the left arrow it'll progress to the left alright so once we've done that let's go ahead and run the program to see where we're at now so as you can see as we click our arrows it'll go ahead and switch to um, through the frames but if we continue clicking the um, count for the active frame is going up one every time I click the right arrow and so now when I click the left arrow it's not doing anything that's because the active frame is now a fairly high number so in order to kind of cap it off what we're going to do is add another condition to the on left button clicked uh, the right arrow when we click the right arrow we're going to add another condition that condition is compare variable under the system menu and we're going to compare if the active frame is less than the um, frame count so it will only trigger the addition it's only going to trigger these actions if the active frame is less than the frame count and then we're also going to add another condition to the left arrow because as we can see if we run the program if we click the left arrow right now right now the active frame is moving into the negatives and if we've clicked that a few times and then click the right arrow it's not going to do anything until the active frame reaches the uh, reaches the positive once again so in order to fix that we're going to add another condition and the condition will be system compare variable is active frame is greater than zero so this way if the active frame goes it won't allow the active frame to go below zero so if we go ahead and run the layout go ahead and allow us to shuffle through the images without uh, without going without allowing the active frame to count too high or count too low alright so now we're going to go ahead and add a new animation we're going to just go ahead and duplicate the family animation that way it will take the same speed property and we're going to name it friends 
And then we're going to go ahead and put a few new pictures into the Friends album. And we'll just delete the last frame here since we don't need it. All right. So once you have that set up, be sure to resize your images. So once again, we're going to have the width at 500 and the height at 400 and apply it to whole animation. And then in order to, if we run the layout, even though we have an animation of friends in here, there's no way to get it, get to it. So we're going to go ahead and add a list item and you can double click and then go into the form controls and just click list. And in order to you in order to change the uh, list items, by default it's going to have item one, item two, item three. All you have to do is add the items you want separated by a semicolon. So in this case we want friends and family. And those will correspond to the names of our animations here. And so now if we run the layout, we have a list item that has both friends and family. Now we're going to add an event. When the list has its selection changed, in other words, if we click on either, if we either select friends or family, we're going to change the animation to of our sprite to friends or family. So set animation, list, period, and then just scroll down to selected text. And now when we run our program, when we switch to the selected text, it's going to switch the animation to the name of the text that we just selected. So once we've done that, um, as it stands right now, if we click up uh, to our third frame in our friends and then switch to family, our active frame is still three. So we can, if we click on the right arrow, even though um, it's not going to actually do anything. So what we're actually going to want to do is we're going to um, add, we're going to set the, uh, basically restore the active frame to the default. And then we're also going to have the system check how many, um, we're going to have the system count the frames that are in the new animation. So in this case, um, you're going to click sprite period animation frame count. This is the same thing that you're going to have on your layout, so you can, uh, on start of layout event, so you can actually copy and paste that if you choose to. And then if we go ahead and run the layout, it will work. All right, so I hope everybody found this tutorial useful. If you liked it, then go ahead and hit the like button. If you want more, then go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.